Hey folks, welcome to the fourth in a series of seven videos where we look at the derivations that you need to know for the advanced higher physics exam. In this video, we're going to look at how to derive an expression for the velocity of an object undergoing SHM, i.e. simple harmonic motion, and this is from the quanta topic. So let's get started. Although given on the relationship sheet in the exam, you could be expected to derive an expression for the velocity of an object undergoing simple harmonic motion. And remember that looks like this here. We've got V equals plus or minus omega root A squared minus Y squared. So we're going to show how to get there. And we can start by saying that since velocity is the rate of change of displacement, we can write that V equals dy by dt. So instead of writing V equals ds by dt, we're using Y to represent the displacement of an object undergoing SHM. So we've got velocity equals the rate of change of displacement, V equals dy by dt. And remember we've got two equations for the displacement of an object undergoing SHM on the relationship sheet. So we have Y equals a sine omega t, or Y equals a cos omega t. And it depends on where the object is starting from as to which one we use to describe the displacement. And here we're going to assume that our object starts from zero displacement, i.e. when y equals zero, which means that our amplitude is zero. So that means we're going to start off with the sine expression y equals a sine omega t. And since we have an expression for y here, we can substitute this in to our expression for velocity here. So that means we want to differentiate y equals a sine omega t with respect to time t. So we have v is equal to d by dt of a sine omega t, and if we differentiate that, we get V equals A omega cos omega t. Because what we need to do, remember, is differentiate the sine of omega t, which means we need to multiply everything here by omega because that is in front of the t. And then we need to differentiate sine to get cosine or cos. So we have V equals A omega cos omega t. And now we want to think about this expression here, which you might remember from maths in terms of sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1. But it is also given on the additional relationship sheet in the exam. So we have sine squared of omega t in this case plus cos squared omega t is equal to 1 since we're not using x we're using omega t and what we essentially want to do here is replace this cos omega t expression so let's rearrange this to get cos squared omega t first so we can just subtract sine squared omega t from both sides here so we get cos squared omega t is equal to 1 minus sine squared omega t and in order to replace cos omega t here we need an expression for cos omega t not cos squared omega t so that means we need to take the square root of both sides here and if we do that the square root of cos squared omega omega t just cancels out the square, so we end up with cos omega t on this side is equal to the square root of 1 minus sine squared omega t. So therefore, we can replace the cos omega t expression in here with our square root of 1 minus sine squared omega t. So that gives us this expression here, where you can see we've got a plus or minus because we've taken square roots, and we can say that v is equal to plus or minus a omega times the square root of 1 minus sine squared omega t. Now we want to get rid of this sine squared omega t term in the square root, so what we can do is think about the expression we used at the start of this derivation for displacement, y equals a sine omega t, and we can rearrange this to get sine omega t and square both sides to get sine squared omega t is equal to y squared over a squared. And to get that, what you need to do here is just divide both sides by a, so you get sine omega t is equal to y over a, and then if you square both sides, you get sine squared omega t is equal to y squared over a squared. And now we can replace the sine squared omega t term within the square root. So that's this one here. And we can replace it with y squared over a squared because we're saying these two things are equal. So we now have v equals plus or minus a omega times the square root of 1 minus y squared over a squared. So it's starting to look more like what we want in terms of the square root term having just y and a in it. And what we then want to do is write the square root term with a common denominator. So we end up with v equals plus or minus a omega times the square root of a squared minus y squared over a squared. And if we look back to see how we get that, well, we're saying that within the square root term here, we want to get a common denominator. So we've not just got this one on the left hand side. So what we can do is rewrite the one as a squared over a squared, because anything divided by itself will give you one. So if we have a squared over a squared minus y squared over a squared, then we can simplify that with a common denominator to get a squared minus y squared divided by a squared. So we've got this expression here, but we just need one more step in order to get to the equation that we want. So finally, we can take the 1 over a squared term outside the square root and cancel the a's. So if we do that, we'll remember the square root of 1 over a squared is just the same as 1 over a. So if we have a divided by a here, then the a's will just cancel out. So that gives us v equals plus or minus omega times the square root of a squared minus y squared, because we've taken the a squared term here outside of the square root to become 1 over a, and those a's will cancel out. So we end up with our final expression for the velocity of an object undergoing SHM, which is v equals plus or minus omega times the square root of a squared minus y squared, where omega is the angular frequency, a is the amplitude of the object, and y is the displacement. 
So very quickly, just to recap that, we start off with the expression for velocity v equals dy by dt, where we're writing y instead of s, and we also need our expression for displacement, y equals a sine omega t. So you want to differentiate that with respect to time, so we end up with v equals d by dt of a sine omega t, and then that gives us v equals a omega cos omega t. And then we think about trig sine squared omega t plus cos squared omega t equals 1, and then we rearrange this to get an expression for cos squared omega t, and then we take the square root of both sides to give cos omega t is equal to the square root of 1 minus sine squared omega t. We then saw we could rewrite our v expression as plus or minus a omega times the square root of 1 minus sine squared omega t, but we want rid of this sine squared omega t term, so thinking about our y equals a sine omega t expression again, we can divide by a and square both sides. Sides. So we get sine squared omega t equals y squared over a squared, and we can then replace the sine squared omega t term within the square root to get this thing here. You then want to get a common denominator, which is this a squared, and then you can take the a squared term outside the square root, and that means you've got a divided by a, which cancels out, to give you the final equation, v equals plus or minus omega times the square root of a squared minus y squared. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.